Recreating the surface of a tennis ball can be made uh, quite easily with the fiber effects tools in Lightweight. Uh, what I have here is a basic little uh, tennis ball model. If you'd like to create this model, uh, be sure to check out the video tutorial on the Lightwave site that steps you through the creation of, of a tennis ball. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll use this model to recreate the surface of a tennis ball. And for starters, we need to add some fibers. So I'm going to go over to Control F8, which brings up the Processing tab. And under Add Pixel Filter, I'm just going to choose Fiber Filter double click to bring up the properties and because it's the only thing in the scene uh, it's easy to spot we'll just select it here and activate it and if I'd like I can turn on the OpenGL draw function and see that well that's pretty much without having to render I've got a pretty good idea that that's not what a tennis ball looks like uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, shrink that scale we know it's not going to be that long so I'm gonna go with 40 and uh, the other thing that I'm noticing is that it, uh, we're putting fibers on that seam, uh, which I don't like. So I'm going to go over to Surface, and instead of All, I'm going to choose Ball Base, which is the surface I gave the, the yellow area. Now to see it update in OpenGL, I just need to uh, arrow key over, uh, just move forward one frame in the timeline. I'm just refreshing OpenGL. And at, now you can see that I'm only putting the fibers uh, where I want them, which is on the yellow surface and not on the, uh, the seam itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, play with the density. Now here's something to think about um, with the density. Don't rush in every time and say, oh, well, the amount of fibers that you'll find on a tennis ball will be in the thousands. So I'm going to type in a thousand. Remember, we're trying to recreate the surface. Uh, it doesn't have to be a physical recreation. It has to look right. And that's all that's important is that it looks right. So I usually try and keep the, um, the fiber density down fairly low. In this case, I am going to crank it up a bit. I'm just going to go to 120. Now, uh, OpenGL is only going to display so many fibers, so we'll see uh, some patches. But that's okay. It'll, it'll be fine when we kick over to... Um, over to the render and really I was only using the OpenGL to get the, the the scale that I was after so I can go ahead and turn that off and I'll, I'll be set. So again uh, density try and keep it low but there's times where you're doing short um, you know short fibers and uh, you're gonna just need to, uh, to to fill that area so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do 120. Um, for stray I'm gonna do 50 because I want to uh, have a few hairs that are uh, a little longer than the um, you know than the the main hairs for uh, fiber smooth I'm gonna uh, change that to three and then um, for kink I'm gonna leave that at a hundred percent usually I turn kink off or keep it really low but in the case of um, the tennis ball surface a hundred percent on kink actually works out pretty good uh, for splay I'm gonna go with a low value of five because I want it to um, to fill the area a little bit more as well because with splay it's gonna um, it's going to expand out from the, the center of our our little cluster there okay for swirl normally I keep it off but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it 20 uh, just to kind of again fill in the area make it a little more random uh, and uh, the big one though the big one that's going to give us our random look on our, our base surface is bump we're gonna leave it at hundred percent but at hundred percent bump doesn't do anything unless we have something in the texture editor so I'm gonna click over uh, to the texture editor and use my my favorite um, procedural that I've been using with the fiber tools which is turbulence which is our default except I'm going to go a bit extreme here and type in 800 percent for the texture value I'm gonna just go crazy with it so that we can really get some uh, so a randomized look on our uh, on our surface and for the um, for the contrast I'm going to let's do 50 okay scale is definitely important with anything that we do so I'm going to just lower that a bit uh, and actually I'm going to just kind of randomize this some. Let's do uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Uh, so we got uh, 200 millimeters in the X and then 20 millimeters in the, the Y and the Z. And um, that almost does it except that the color of our fibers is going to be important. So I'm going to go over to color and I could change uh, the, the base color and the tip color here but instead I want to take advantage of a, a, a great option in the gradient. So, layer type, gradient, 
input parameter. I'm going to change it to fiber U, okay, which is the like a UV map. Well, uh, what it allows me to do is I've got my base here, and for my base, I'm going to pick kind of a greenish yellow for my for my base. And you can be as picky as you want with the the RGB values. I'm just going to kind of rough this in. I'm going to set another key for the tip of my fiber and let's just use that yellow. So we, we have a, just a slight change in color but I think it's going to be a nice subtle little look that we can go with. So we'll go ahead and keep that and um, let's go ahead and go over to shadow. Now since the the fibers are short I don't want that uh, to have that much shadow going on so I'm just going to lower the self shadow to 15%. We can change it to a lower or higher value based on what our render looks like. Um, but then uh, for cast shadow, I'm going to lower that as well. It'll speed up render time, uh, which of course is important when working with uh, uh, a high density. But it's also important um, in the case of short uh, fur to, to lower those settings just because they're not going to cast that much shadow uh, being as short as we've got them set. So let's do a render and see where we're at. Okay, so we've got um, a pretty good idea, but once we turn shadows on, it's going to be better. But I can see that I've got this, this fuzz going all over my surface. But there's something that's, that's missing, and, and uh, in my opinion, this looks like a brand new tennis ball. I want something more like this. Uh, this is kind of what the end result that we're going for here. And see all this nice uh, little um, longer uh, stray phrase on the surface? To me, that is what a tennis ball looks like, at least after uh, my dogs have had a little bit of time with them. Uh, so this is what I'm going after. Now, I have some options on how I could go about doing that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, we'll close this render. Uh, and one thing I could do is I could play with procedural textures on random length and stray and, uh, and, and try and get that effect. But a faster way of doing it and one that you'll have a lot more control is to come up with a whole new set of, of attributes just for those long hairs. Now to do that, this is pretty handy, we'll come over to uh, this object and I'm going to right click and I'm going to clone that object. What it allows me to do is apply another set of fibers to it with completely different settings. This this changed ever, everything for me when I learned this, uh, this setup. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click on that. Uh, and for density, now for the longer hairs, we don't need as many fibers. To, to be honest, what I usually start off with uh, when I, I'm working with the set of, second set of hairs to get those long hairs is under 10%. Uh, but in the case of this tennis ball, I'm going to go around 25%, so a lot lower than what the uh, the base um, setting is, the default setting is, uh, but uh, a little higher than what I'd normally do. But it's just we've got that, that small short sur surface that we want to work with. Now, another trick um, that you can uh, apply when you're using these multiple copies is for the longer hairs, there's no reason for there to be any shadow. Because we're getting the shadow from the shorter hairs. The longer hairs, they're so thin and small, they're not going to cast shadow uh, in the real world. So we should be pretty, pretty set there. This is also going to speed up render time, which is a, a great little tip there that I picked up from uh, James Wilmot. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and play with, uh, with some of our settings a bit. For kink, I'm going to crank that up, 200%. And uh, for swirl, let's do 150. These are the longer hairs. I'm going to get a little, uh, little crazier with them. Um, for, um, uh, for the scale, uh, 600, again, would be too much. But instead of going as low as we did on the other one, we want these to be a little longer. So I'll do 120. Um, and then for bump, let's go add that bump again. Procedural, let's uh, do turbulence, let's do 800. Uh, contrast, I'm just going to leave that at zero just so that I get a slightly different look. But for scale, let's use the same settings that we used before. Okay, so now I've got a second set of fibers uh, on the same surface, on the same object, uh, but just slightly different settings that it's going to allow me to, to blend it. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and turn um, shadows on. So render tab, render globals, and let's turn on ray trace shadows. And let's see what we've got. 
we have our um, longer hairs but there's a problem it's been rolling in dirt and what I forgot to do which um, well it depends on the look you're going for but this definitely wasn't the look I was going for as far as those longer um, fibers it is a good idea to use slightly different colors uh, just to kind of give that that nice variation but uh, I'm not really uh, interested in having brown fibers on my tennis ball so what I'm gonna do is go over to color and for the color mode textured let's go back and make a, another gradient and uh, layer type gradient input parameter let's do uh, fiber U and I could go and copy all of this so I get the exact same values but again just like I said sometimes it's good to uh, to just get variation so I'm just gonna eyeball the color so it's gonna be it's gonna be different I'm, I'm intentionally gonna make it, it different there and then we'll go with the same maybe just change it a little bit okay so we get the basic uh, same basic setup and so let's do a render and we should uh, end up with um, what we're after so there we go in 25.7 seconds we got our uh, fully fibered tennis ball here with the nice little strays let's um let's take a look I'm gonna just zoom in a bit so that we can see let's go even closer we can see all the nice little stray uh, fibers kicking off of off of our surface so it's a quick look at uh, putting fibers on a tennis ball uh, and uh, one of the things that I'd really like to to point out is the cloned uh, making a duplicate copy of our of our surface here of our object here and applying a separate set of fibers that we have full control over this is going to give you ultimate control because instead of trying to get the short hair and the short fibers and the long fibers all in one setting we get to break it up get full control makes it easier for us and uh, and we're ready to go